are going to look at the solution for this pop quiz. Oh, by the way, it says December 7th because it was the same one given to Mandragar's class yesterday. Oh, uh, you should have asked the other class, right? And uh, let's go through the solution. Here's the important thing to ask. I've asked for what? Draw a state diagram, which means, do I want you to do a truth table? No. In fact, that's the subject of the second page, and I'm just going to go over that example as well. Uh, one input and three outputs. So I know this. I have uh, uh, going to have different outputs as they go along. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So eight different outputs. So how many states do you think I'm going to have? So obviously I need eight different states. And lo and behold, we also say that the gray code sequence for the FSM should output this and generates a sequence called gray code, which is exactly one of the three uh, output changes from zero to one. By the way, gray code means you go and from here to here you change only one bit. From here to here you change 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 one. Here to here you change one. Here, etc. So, I know that I'm going to want, if I'm starting at zero, 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 this is my x, y, z is going to be equal to zero, zero, zero. That's what my output is. And uh, uh, it also says that this is the initial state. So I need to have an arrow going into this. So there will be points associated with this. By the way, you could, you could take the video of this, but it's going to be posted online, and the video will be online too. So, um, and, uh, and then the next one... And notice I also say here is that uh, when input is g count 1, when, so when g count is 1, I will go to the next grace code, gray code state. And it also says something about on the rising edge of the clock. Well, what designs have we done this entire time on the rising edge of the clock? So that just is uh, some additional information saying that we're doing the same thing we've always done. So in this case, we worry about GCNT is equal to 1. We'll go there. But I also mentioned if uh, GCNT is equal to 0, we'll stay in the state. So now for this one, the x, y, z was going to be equal to uh, uh, 0, 1, 0. Uh, we have another one here, another one here, another one. Man, this is weak. <laughs> another one here. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, that's no better. Seven, eight. So we always know that we're going to go to the next state. whenever GCNT is equal to 1. Correct? And uh, let's see, this was XYZ equal to uh, 0, 1, 1. This is uh, um, XYZ equals to 0, 0, 1. X, Y, Z equals to 1, 0, 1. X, Y, Z is equal to 1, 1, 1. 1, 1, 0. 1, 0, 0. And in some, well, I'll do this later with all the other ones when I get a pen that actually works. Uh, so the only last thing is what's going to be the numbering for each one of these states, right? So in this case, 
Uh, the most obvious choice would be that the current state is just going to be numbered to be the same thing as the output. And so for all of the points for this, I would expect you to um, have this uh, g count equal to zero for every state, g count equal to one for every state, correctly label the output, and then of course uh, give uh, this and have a initial state. Question? Do you accept like g count not or just g count? Yeah, uh, g count not is, is fine. That's the same thing. Yes? Well, don't forget in a finite state machine, you actually have a, a, a digits, you know, a certain number of binary numbers associated with it. So if you wanted to call this A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, that's fine, but you also need to have 0, 0, 0 inside. Because that's part of the uh, making a finite state machine. All right, murmur, murmur, murmur. I always like that. Yeah, what do uh, uh. <laughs> All right. <laughs> How's my canary back there? Uh, happy, sad? You're sad? You're very sad? Very sad, okay. Sorry. But, by the way, I've seen it before problems where G count would send you in one direction and not G count would send you in the uh, opposite direction. Hmm. That would be a very interesting problem that may show up on a future quiz or test. <laughs> how many future quizzes do you think you're going to have for this class? Zero. So how many future tests do you think this might show up on? Hmm. Notice I said it might. <laughs> um, using the process for designing a controller, convert the finite, finite, finite state machine you created in previous problem to a controller, implementing the controller using state register and logic gates. In other words, what we've gone through in the process. So, hey, just for fun, should we go through this? Sure? All right, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to, you've done this lots and lots and lots of times, right? Yes? No, yes, all right, yes. Go ahead and solve that, and uh, we'll take a break. And actually, I picked up some people's second page, so I'll, if you don't have the second page, I'll just hand it out to you, all right? And everybody was really excited about this question, and they said, uh, show us the solution anyhow, right? Well, let's remember what the process was. We start out with this, and uh, that's actually a fairly easy state diagram, right? It still does have eight states. That's a lot of states. But at least it's not all this funky transition from all over the place. Well, there's a trick here that when we do our design, you have to imagine if our state is numbered 0, 0, 1, our output is 0, 0, 1. And that's actually to our advantage because later on when we identify if this is the current state, that's the output, what can we do in our design? This is S2, S1, S0. And lo and behold, look, XYZ, S2, S1, S0. It's direct wired. So that means that there's no logic at all that you have to worry about for um, at the outputs because it's just wires that go from our design. So let's, uh, let's look at this step by step. The first step, what is our first step with doing any design finite state machine? Truth table, right? So this is what the truth table I came up with. Uh, I have been known to uh, make 
minor problems. So let's look at some of these. If I am in state 0, 0, 0, and my G count is 0, what happens? It stays, right? So there we got 0, 0, 0 is the next, or is the current state. Uh, same with this, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, all the way down should be the same. So when you have a G count there, it goes to the next state. That's where I need to pull this up and to say I go from 0, 0, 0 to 0, 1, 0. So that means that the next state is going to be 0, 1, 0. Keeping in mind, of course, that it works out nice that my state of 0, 0, 0 over here has an output of 0, 0, 0. And then we keep on going all the way down. If we look at, I'm at state 0, 1, 1 with a G count. 0, 1, 1, I go to 0, 0, 1. So I go to 0, 0, 1. There we go. All right. So do you understand first thing, truth table, right? What's the next step? Come on, what's the next step? What is it? K-map. So I came up with this K-map. I hope I'm right. So I, you know, literally went down. Here we go. Uh, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1. 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, all right? And I did that for N2, N1, N0. And the interesting thing that pops up is in each one I have exactly three groupings that I could do. Now here's the interesting one is uh, one, you might be tempted to actually do a grouping of these four up here in this corner but it's already picked up by everybody else and to get this one over here you can just minimally group these two together. In the end I came up with these uh, these equations from the K-map. Question? Ah, because is that a one? Uh, no, to the right. Oh, right here? To the bottom right, yeah. yeah, so I could do that, but uh, then does that pick up this one up here? Does that pick up that one over there? No. So I would still have to do those two individual ones. You know, and, and all, all I, I could, well, even though I could do these four, and then I could do these two and these two, actually that is the minimum, minimal, is uh, um, this two and this two right here I could do. So, uh, let's see, wh which one did I just circle there? Because um, I can get at least those four and then pick up this extra one over there. But getting this single one right there, I still need to circle that up there. And that's, you know, that's just kind of redundant anyhow. So, uh, so I can make this a little bit more minimal. Um, and I've got to figure out which one that was. Uh, that would be S2, um, S2, S1, G count. All right, so this now would become S2, GCNT not. All right. So then what's my, uh, this is uh, step, uh, step B, K-maps. So then what's my next step? Actually drawing the solution, right? So this is uh, step C, and that is my, uh, um, my circuit. And so as I mentioned earlier, since this shows obviously that S2, S1, S0 are K or X, Y, Z, I don't even have to do the K map for that one. So I'm just going to uh, I'm just going to not even bother because I have X, Y, and Z that are simply those over there, and then uh, for all of my remaining 
circuits. This is where I would put in my, uh, my design. So up here is uh, N2, N1, N0. And this is where I would have my S2, S1, S1, S0, G count, and then uh, S2 and uh, G count. And then I would do it for all the remaining ones. All right, do you understand that design? Yeah, they're like, oh, yeah, sure, whatever. <laughs> so do you think you could do something like this on the exam? Say, you could do it on the exam if it looked exactly like this, right? <laughs> exactly like this. Or maybe I can give you one that looks similar, or maybe I can give one that doesn't even look anything like this, because I want to be a jerk about it. <laughs> I like that. Aww. All right. Any questions? Being none, that's all I will uh, go over today. Thank you very much.